webinar. It is using BD, Fact, Steva, and Atri importers in FCS Express 6. I'm Amanda Dixon, a technical application specialist with Genovo Software. And for those of you who may not know us, we have been working with thousands of researchers worldwide for about 18 years now, helping provide premier solutions for flow and image cytometry data analysis and reporting. So we're kind of a one-stop shop where you can do all your analysis and reporting workflows in a quick and easy to use interface. If this is your first time joining us, thank you. We have many more happening. For webinars, I'll show you a quick little list on this next tab. So this is the second webinar in our winter series. Every day the rest of this week and also Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, we have additional webinars covering anything from the basics of compensation, NFCS Express, as well as batch processing, and including an introduction to the basic feature and functionality and really useful tools and getting started this Friday. If you want to know more about our high quality products like security and logging features or 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, you're more than welcome to join that webinar next Tuesday. And if you really want to see some high content analysis, multiple plate data generation, both for flow and imaging experiments, you're more than welcome to join those. And to join those, it's really quick and easy, I'll just show you on our webpage. So here, if you go to our homepage, denovosoftware.com and scroll down, you can see a registration portal. So if I go into here, upcoming webinars are available. If you miss any of them or you want to see what's been recorded previously, you can go down to the second half and look at our recorded webinars. So really quick and easy to actually sign up, receive the links, or view them yourself. And just before we begin, I want to give you a quick overview of what we'll be covering today. So essentially, we're going to show you how to save time by importing your acquisition workspaces from both BD Diva software and the BD Atri software program. So what you can do is we'll go through a few tips of exporting from Diva into the appropriate format to make your import into FCS Express Slingless. And then actually, it's so quick, we'll walk through both wizards. So we'll go through the Diva wizard, import an experiment from Diva, go through some plot formatting choices to show you all the different things you can do, including converting your plots, changing the scaling, using keywords from both your FCS standard or BD specific keywords that are written to the metadata on the header of the file, and updating gates and adding statistics. We'll do a similar workflow for the BD Atri importer, which is also super quick and simple to use. Because we have direct compatibility, you don't have to export your Atri files as FCS. You can use the C6 or CI file types either with a sample-based or plate-based configuration. Easily look at those data files however you want. We'll show you both ways going through the wizard and also uploading a data file in a plate format. You can also make additional plot formatting choices as well, continue on from your workspace, such as magnifying. We'll even go through a hinge gates example. We have a visual of that available and adding statistics. At any time, you're welcome to ask questions and we'll go through them. But without that, we'll continue on. So for the first part, exporting from Diva, there are two big tips. You want to ensure that you are actually exporting your experiment or XML file separately from your FCS files. The reason being is when you export your experiment, you may export FCS files that are valid only within the Diva software, so you'll actually just need to export your experiment for XML first, delete those associated FCS files, and then do a second export to choose FCS files from Diva. This is kind of an example over here of exporting your FCS files in a later version. The second thing, depending on which version you're using with Faxdiva, you want to make sure that the specimen and tube name keywords are associated with your data files when they're exported. So for Diva 6.0, it's probably doing something like 1, 2, 3, 4, um, dot .fcs, and then in 7 or later, later, they may include the sample or specimen keyword, but you also want to make sure that you have the specimen and tube name. And if at any time you want detailed instructions about any of these tips, you can go to our website and from there, you can see our knowledge base page for every little detail about how to export from Diva and do the import process. So quick and easily available, we can make those links ready for you to access. Any questions so far? Great. 
Let's begin with the importer. So from the file tab up here in the top, we'll go in and then down from the bottom, about halfway down the list, you can see open from. When you select this option, you'll see existing layouts or your two importers. And we'll start with importing from BD Fax Diva. So when I click on that, I'll be directed to find my Diva data. I'll go to the folder, here's that XML document, and I'll say open. Once you choose the data file to open, or the experiment file, excuse me, you'll be initializing the wizard. So the first two options you have to define in the wizard are defining which worksheets you're importing and if you're adding FCS files at this time. So if you're using global or normal worksheets with NFCS Express, or excuse me, Faxdiva, you can rest assured that you can import any or all of them into FCS Express. So what you can do is you can actually click and choose any or all. For simplicity, I'm only going to do the second sheet. And then for FCS files, you can choose to load the associated files from the directory from where you export it, or you can choose not to. So we're going to load them at the same time and choose next. And now you're prompted to choose a configuration file. There's a lot of information written down here, so essentially all you need to know about this configuration file is the page breakdown and divisions and layout from Diva either being imported or not. So they're not included with the exported file, so all you have to do is say create a new configuration and advance to the next one to create a new layout. And by that, you can choose the letter size or page size. I can choose defaults, I can choose standards, I can change the orientation, the margins, anything I need to make it look how I want it to. And as I'm doing that, we can see these page breaks over here in the pane. The preview pane allows me to change where they are. So I can click within, change the page breaks, or I can click outside and make those fit. So here, one page has all those plots available, and I'll just click Next. You can choose to save this configuration if you want. It's so quick and easy to use, I'm just going to skip it for now. But if you have multiple experiments and they're all set up the same way in Diva, and you want to use the same configuration in NFCS Express, you can save it. But we'll skip that for now and click Finish. So now that we're done, we can see all these plots are populated. So all of these plots from Diva are available, and not only do we have the plots, we're going to have the dates. So if I go in and insert the date view over here, we can see all the dates created are available. Not only do we have all the plots or dates and the compensations associated, we have all the data files as well. So if we go from the data tab, I can open up my data list and see all those data files available. So I can change my data file, so I just double click this last one here, all the plots are updating, and I can go up through the data tab to change the data on all objects to scan through my different data files. And we'll go back up to the top. Any questions about the plot choices so far or anything like that? Great. So what we can do is we can not only use this as a starting point, we can create new gates, edit gates, anything we want. So here, if I don't want this gate to be yellow, I can actually change it. So I can come into the R1 here, right click, gate properties, and change the color. So all the normal workflows I can do in FCS Express based layouts, I can do with these acquisition templates I'm importing. So now this is orange. I can add that my text box if I wanted to, and we can see that's available. When dot plots are imported into FCS Express, they're just going to be simple dot plots, but if you want to change it to display the bad gating of other plots, you're more than welcome to. So to do that, you just select the plot, and from the Format tab, I can go all the way over to the right almost and choose Change Plot Type Dropdown. So when I choose this, I can choose Dot Plot, and we can see that update with the latest gate. In addition to showing the different back gating available, I can actually specify which gates are displayed on a plot. So for this one, I'll go back up to the Format tab and choose Gaze to Display. Now within this gates to display window, I can choose only the ones I'm interested in, so I can say any, some, or none, and choose them. So maybe I only want to see those, and if I say OK, if I drag it over and change this one, let me change that back by undo and undo. 
and fix that. Now we can go through and change them. So if I move this date over, we can see those update. Another nice feature we have available with our gating tools is emphasizing low frequency events. So to do that, I can actually go into the format of that, overlays, and emphasize low frequency populations. What this allows me to do is for events under 2% of the gate, there'll be an increased dot size. So I can see these larger dots now, and as I move across and become greater than 2%, those will update. Let's make this gate a little bit larger and go from there. Perfect. So another way we can do this, if you didn't finish your analysis in your acquisition program, so if you were in Diva and you only got a starting point and you needed to finish it later, we can actually make new dates or plots. So I can just drag and drop it over, and now I have a new plot. I can format this plot to a histogram or anything I want and change those as well. I can add a gating tool such as a marker to identify my population of interest and continue that analysis. If I wanted to create this date within a hierarchy, I can actually do what I can do in other program or other layouts that are started from scratch and convert my marker. So up here in the right click menu, I can just convert this marker to a gate and give it a name. Let's do that again. And now I've inserted statistics, so we'll undo that. I apologize. And now I'll call this my marker date. And you can see here it's actually falling right in under the parent date that was originally created in Diva. And it's within my hierarchy. Questions about editing plots or dates at this time? We're going to do a, format, a couple more formatting options, but this is how we can continue our analysis. If you want, you can change the default for the title within the plots. So I can actually do this individually. So here I can go select my histogram, go into my format tab, and choose my title. And from here I can change the default from something FCS specific to maybe BD Facts Diva keyword specific. So I can erase this, go into my keyword from data, verify my plot, and choose my keyword. So I can come in and scroll down. As I'm scrolling through the list, I just see all the different metadata that's been written to the data file. And if I go on down a little bit more, we'll be able to find our tube name and choose OK. And OK. And now we can see that information is updated. I can do it for all the other plots as well, following the same multiple select click through and changing it here. If I wanted to add additional keywords, I could. So you can actually choose to add however much you need to annotate your plots appropriately. So for these, we'll go down a little bit further, back into the BD keywords, choose tube name, and say OK. And now those have updated as well. So in addition to formatting or converting plots that have been imported, you can actually just change the way they're visualized as well. So we can see here that the contour plots from BD Facts Diva have been imported, but they don't include the outliers. So if we wanted to, I could go into the overlays option and choose to display those and change the color as well and size. So if I come in, now I can see the outliers available. I can do it for this plot as well if I wanted to, or I could just add a different gate come in here, and maybe this is the information I need. One last thing about plot formatting choices when you're looking at your fluorescent data from Diva is that you're probably familiar with using by exponential defaults in Diva. Based on our corporate collaboration and partnership with BD, we actually have that proprietary algorithm to be applied to your data when it's imported as well. So if we look down here at this lower plot, I'm going to actually maximize it and change to the data files. So the bias initial algorithm is applied to all the events within the FCS file. So as we go through and change the data file, we may see a little bit of change happening in the display. And if you wanted to, that drift is caused on this part of your data. You can actually set it to be calculated differently or use a manual value. 
And so to do that, you can go into the Format tab, and under Axes, you can actually define how you want it to be calculated. So if you uncheck Automatic, the value that's automatically calculated can be updated to only be calculated for events within a specific gate using the DIVA method or the fifth percentile, depending on which approach you wish to take. So here, if I uncheck automatic, I can actually enter a value. So maybe if I say something like 1,000 for the below zero parameter, what this value is, this is going to show the most negative value plotted within your gate, or excuse me, within your plot. So if you have a lot of negative data, we can see that this has changed and the axis has been updated based on that value. I can undo it, and I can actually make it be calculated automatically plot to plot. So you can deviate from where you want to go with DIVAS um, by its initial algorithm, or you have it set a specific way, however you prefer. Are there any questions about the by exponential scaling or formatting features of that? Great, so we'll just continue on outside of formatting, so I'm actually going to undo that and minimize my plot. So we'll make it smaller, and I'm just going to reposition it over here. So I can change it however I want. What you may notice is that while we have all the plots and gates, as well as all the data files from your DIVA experiment, we haven't imported the statistics. Those aren't included. But we have all the statistics available that you're familiar with. All you have to do is right-click on a plot and insert a statistics table. So here for this histogram, if I click there, we can see all this information is brought in. So all these are defaulted into the software. And if I wanted to, I can actually format it and look at BD robust standard deviation or CV values, if I scroll down just a little bit, we can see all those familiar ones here. So if you're familiar with the BD robust standard deviation or CV, they're available as well as the percent parent, gated populations, and grandparent. So I can just check those in to add them and deselect other options as well. And if I say OK, there are those events related to the histogram. So we can add those in. I can do it for any other 2D plots available as well. You can add whatever you need and look at all the data files. So I can change my file name and look at that. Once you've actually finished formatting your plots and adding your statistics, your layout will be ready to export out into PDF, Word, however you want to do to quickly share your results with the world. So if you're not familiar with batch processing, I strongly encourage you to join that webinar or view its recording. It'll definitely help you run through your data files in a much more rapid fashion to get them out into any format type you need. If there aren't any questions with the BD formatting or importing, we'll jump into the Acri importer. Okay, same workflow, very similar. So we're going to go to the File tab and go to Open From. So for the BD Acri data, you just choose this. You navigate to where you need to go to find your Acri data. Here I have a plate format, but I'm going to load the files individually and say open and run through the wizard. For Acri data, you can import from the collect tabs or analyze tabs as well. And from this drop down menu, you can actually specify which file is used to plot data in the first import. I'm going to start at the top of the list, but you can choose anywhere you want and say next. Just like the configuration file, you don't have to create one for the Acri like you did in BD Diva, but what you can do is you can define the page orientation and plot sizes as well. So here I'll just change the page again and the layout, and I'll choose not to include it. I can change the column, the number of plots per row or column within a page, and really edit it as nicely as I need. So maybe I'll do this and say finish. And as it runs through all the different tabs available in the Acri software export, now I can have these plots available as well. So I can come in here, I can choose the different plots, I can see them on different pages if I wanted to, and reformat them however I want. 
notes over these since they're a little small. I'm actually going to make them a little bit larger. So I can highlight them all to select or hit Control A and resize them. So if I go to the Format tab, I can choose Size here, or I can just click and drag them out like this. I can change the orientation if I wanted to, anything I need. I can change my text boxes for my different gates and drag them out, reposition them, anything I want. So I'm actually going to resize them using the Format tab. I can come down here, say something like that, and align them. So whatever you need to do to visualize it, you can. And I'll just do the same thing here. And we're ready to go. So from your Acri data, just like the Diva import, whenever you're doing this, this is just a starting point. All the plots are there. All the dates are there. So let's go to the date view. We can see all the plots available. I can open up my data list. And from that multi-well plate, we can see the dozens of data files that are associated with all the individual wells. So I can actually look at different data files if I wanted to and change them just like I did in Diva. So we're going to start with this first data file just to manipulate a few things, and then we'll be all done. So let's close this data list and format it. I can click and drag my date out, add a new data plot. I can change the parameters that I need to however I want. What I like to do is actually work from here to show you our magnifying resolution tool. So I can come down and I can actually make a gate there. So maybe if I'm interested in this population, I can call them gate one, I'll leave it at a default, and drag and drop it out. Let's change the parameters. And now we can see the Acri with this seven decade data is being displayed in its native 24-bit resolution. And if I wanted to, I can actually zoom in. So I can say magnify resolution, just click and drag across and look at my population in a more refined detail. So instead of seeing seven decades of data, I can just limit it to the decades I need. Questions about magnifying plots or changing the resolution? Great. So I can come in here, I can make another gate if I wanted to, however I need, and just continue on with that analysis. So I won't go into all the details of that, but I can also show you how to pull in Acri specific keywords. So if we edit these plates, rather than showing this entire long string of text showing the plate name, C6, and the well ID, I can actually just format it to show the sample or well ID. So if I select those, I can go into the Format tab and change my title. And if I insert a keyword from the data, just like the Facts Diva data has Diva specific keywords, we can search for those Acri specific keywords. So here you can see the hash sign and go through all of those if you needed to. You'll run into the FCS standard ones here. And if I continue on down, we'll see some other ones. So whatever you need to annotate your data, you can. So I can come in here and choose my sample and say OK. I can even add free text within these title text boxes so I can annotate it to say well. I can change the font. I can make it bold and larger and say OK and then preview. And now those have updated correctly. I can move my date text boxes, anything I need. Okay, we go forward a little bit more. One thing I haven't shown you yet is the hinge gates. So we'll go through the hinge gates you may be familiar with from the Acri software, and then I'll also show you multi-well plate data. So we go into the web browser one more time. Acri just last year announced their hinge gates to help account for signal spillover. Gating strategies, so what it looks like in FCS Express, is going to be similar, so we can actually go in. And if we look in here, we can see the hinge gates. So if you do use those, know that we're going to read those directly from your CI files. Okay. One last thing, let's create a new layout, and I'll show you how to look at multi-well plate data. So I'm just going to create a blank one, and from the Insert tab, I'm going to insert a heat map. And this is going to give me a multi-well view of my data. So I come in and draw it. I'll be 
be prompted to identify the data file. So let's go back to my desktop and pull up that plate. When you're loading those data files, you'll want to change the file type dropdown. So here I'm just going to scroll up and choose Bediatry C6 Plate Files and say Open and then OK. So then that's going to populate with all the multi-well plate data. I can insert other plots and create other strategies as well. I can format them however I want. So I can actually come in here and if I wanted to make a well gate, I can format it. Oops excuse me, and choose create a well gate. Maybe I want to look at individual wells, so I can say this is my single well of interest. And I can see those back gated on a plot. So that as I edit that gate, and I choose different wells, we can see the events displayed differently on the scatter gate. Really useful tool. We'll go into details with that in NetSuite's webinar. So if you have multi-well plate data and you want to learn how to look anywhere from single cell analysis to aggregate data with the click of a button, I strongly encourage you to see that webinar. So we'll go ahead and shut that down. Questions about multi-well plate data or loading aggregate plate files? Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to show you a couple resources available on the website. So if you go to denovosoftware.com at any time, you can see our knowledge base pages. So from today's webinar, we actually have a fully detailed knowledge base on exporting from Diva with screenshots and loading into FCS Express, as well as the VD Accurate Importer. So we give you all the details on that in case you actually want to walk through your own data sets. You can do it on your own, or if you want support, you can actually go to the support tab and look at live help. You can email us or call us at any time with your questions. We're more than happy to talk with you and get you on your way and let you see how quickly you can get your data analysis done. So with that, I'd just like to thank you for attending and just let you know that you don't have to upload your Accurate data files directly. We can read any FCS file from any machine. So if you do export FCS files from Accurate or Faxdiva and you want to start from scratch with a blank layout and your whole new analysis within FCS Express, you can do it. But the importers allow you to save time by using these acquisition workplaces as a starting point. So you don't have to remember your gating strategy. You don't have to recreate plots. You can use those as a starting point and continue on your analysis and export it however you need. So. Please visit us anytime online at fcsexpress.com or denovosoftware.com, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you for joining.